Hey guys, it's Kristen from Rethink Tailoring. So this is my part two to my video of making fabric straps. I'm wearing my mask now just because I can really easily sterilize this area that I was working on earlier. But when I'm going to my sewing machine, I just want to make sure I keep that area really um, clean and sterilized because I'm still in mask making mode at the store. So hopefully you can hear me okay. Um, with the straps that we had, now this is going to go into the wash like I said, um, just to sterilize it and then also get it to uh, find the, the shrink that it's going to want to get to. Um, and I tie it in four straps into just my little batch and I tie it on one of the ends. I don't tie it tight, it's just to keep them contained. So you'll see what I'm talking about in a little bit, but let's go ahead and go to the machine. Okay, so I just washed my hands and I'm ready to go on my machine. Got my straps here, and I'm going to stitch with my quarter inch seam allowance. And now I'm going to lift this up and take my strap and shove it into the corner. It doesn't have to be really tight into the corner, but I do like to leave a little bit of extra seam allowance here. And just a quick little look so you can see just a little extra seam allowance there. So I'm going to go forwards and backwards and forwards again. And I am not, um, for my stitch, stitch length, I'm not too small just because I don't want to make too many holes in this mask um, or in the knit. Um, every time you put a needle through the knit, it can kind of weaken it more. But I don't want to rely on only one line of stitching, so I am going to back tack. And the other thing I will say is that you are going to want to use a ballpoint needle if you can. Um, the sharp needles may um, actually puncture the fabric slightly. I mean, it's just tiny punctures, but that can add up over time and knits can be a little finicky. And the ballpoint needles are great because um, it makes the fibers kind of wiggle around the needle. Back tacked. Go into the corner. I'm going to take my next strap, place it about half of an inch from the corner, and I'm back tacking and then sticking with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to stitch all the way down this length. I'm going to do the same thing where I grab another strap. Shove it in the corner. Doesn't need to be too tight, but there it is. Now I'm just gonna, because this is kind of bulky right here, I'm just gonna kind of feel this out, just flatten it as best as possible and just see where that fabric wants to rest in the corner. And place my last corner. And I'm just going to shove this out of the way. Here's where I started, so I'm going to just go a little bit further. And we're good. So I'm just going to trim. So this is what we have. I've got my knot sticking out. And the reason why I put these knots, um, this knot close to the end, is that way I'm not accidentally grabbing the same strap that I sewed somewhere else. So then when I grab a tail, I know it's actually a tail that I need to grab. So I'm going to flip this right side out, and then I'll show you how to turn the corners. So each corner, I'm just going to give a little tug. And now, um, just because we didn't have it right at the corner, if you see this kind of fold here, we're going to push that out. So I have an official corner turner that I finally replaced because I broke the last one. But I've actually been really liking my... Um, my strap turner um, to get in there to poke it. But this is what you're probably going to have at home. Ballpoint pen. Don't do this. Do this. So click that ink in there. And you're going to go into the corners and just give it a nice little shove. Don't, don't be too aggressive with it because it's fabric. Anything can break with the right, uh, you know, pressure and force. So just kind of give it a a shove, see if you can get those corners to come out a little bit. And 
then the rest of the mask um, you can just kind of carry on with the regular tutorial um, so I do have on my uh, videos I do have a quicker way to do the pleats where you don't use pins so that would be my next part is I'm going to press this and then press my just one of my or my regular um, pleating lines and then I'm going to go ahead and stitch it and then it's all done so that's that um, yeah I hope you guys found this useful um, this is part of my pay what you can tutorials if you are able to feel free to pitch in a dollar for the tutorials um, you can actually find it in the, in my online shop now so if you go to rethinktailoring.com and hit shop now um, that'll bring you to the online shop and just go ahead and look in there and there's the pay what you can tutorials um, again it's pay what you can so if you can't I totally understand times are really weird right now so I want to have this stuff these videos up here so that even if you're not able to contribute now um, you know this information is here to kind of help you guys out but if you're able to feel free okay thank you guys so much and let me know if you have any questions and keep calm and so on